I'm a law professor. I don't usually hear applause. Um, and, and thank you for coming, and thank you to the SAG Foundation for sponsoring this. I'm, I'm delighted to speak to you, and I'm very, very happy to give you the opportunity to get a sense of what some of these issues are. Um, I think you have my biography, but a little bit of my background is I have worked for most of the big studios, mostly in distribution. I have represented independent filmmakers and little production companies in California. And I began at Chapman University at Dodge College, and I now teach at the law school, where I teach a course, Negotiating and Drafting Media Transactions. And I, I sponsored and, and, I guess, run the Entertainment Law Clinic with another faculty member who's a music specialist. And we bring in ultra-low budget filmmakers. I will talk to you more about that um, toward the end, when you have more information from me on what all that means. Um, and questions I'll take at the end. I think you have cards to fill out. Yeah. That's a bit, tiny bit about me. And the tiny bit I've heard about you is that some of you are interested in making film. You're interested in putting together your own reels, your own films, your own something or other. I'm going to use the word film and media all interchangeable. I don't care if it's a vine. I don't care if it's feature film, whatever it happens to be, six seconds. I know, the short attention span generation, right? Whatever it happens to be, the law is the law. There isn't anywhere in the law where it says, but it's OK if it's less than a certain amount of minutes. It is what it is. So if I say film or media, whatever you're doing, it probably applies. Okay? And I'm going to cover a lot of general principles. Um, you, am I, uh, let's see. You should be looking at. Nothing? You should be looking at something. I know. They're working on it. What you're going to look at, you can read when it comes around, because it's a long story about how, it's my caveat. This is not legal advice to you. This is not going to make you a lawyer. If it was that easy, is it on? What did I do wrong? Just try to aim it towards this. More of it? OK. It's a little, sorry, it's all sensitive. It's sensitive. <laughs> Me. Um, if, if this was easy, I'd give you the answer book. Or I'd better probably sell it to you. If this was that simple, if there were forms, I would hand them to you. And we'd all go on our merry way. This is the way you do it. You go off and do it. Unfortunately, that's not how it works. Each situation has its own set of facts and its own set of circumstances that go on and on in great depth. And it's a lawyer's job to go through some of that and understand it. So I'm going to give you the ability to understand what some of these issues might be. My goal here is that you look at your production and you see a potential issue. You could decide either to work around it, don't do that, or let's address it now. I'm going to help you identify those things. And I'm going to also give you some reasons why you'll want to. It isn't all going to be like this. Um, I was going to actually show you something I show my students, which is what most contracts look like to most people. Zero font and endless words. You can't read any. It, it's, it's torture. You can't get through it all. I'm not going to do that to you today. I'm not going to run you through endless contracts. I'm going to give you contract principles that you need to watch for. What am I looking for? Why do I need this? What really matters here? And how am I going to turn all this into something useful? If you have a question that's specific, Get it answered from someone who can sit quietly with you and go through the question and all the surrounding facts. I can't do that here today, obviously. Often the question is not what you think it is. Should I sign this? Is I'm not getting paid. The question might be something else entirely. That's what a lawyer is supposed to do with you. Sit quietly and go through these issues, help you resolve them with all the necessary information. I have here California Lawyers for the Arts. They have a referral service, first half hour is, I think, free, but you pay a slight fee to use the service. There's their website. Um, there are easy access for individual questions. You get lawyers to work with who have an expertise. There is help for you. When I looked at your website, at the previous speakers, you had panels full of interesting, attractive people talking to each other. And Norman Lear, thank you, and Norman Lear. Wonderful people talking to each other, and I'm here on my own. 
So I'm going to be part of a panel here. I'm going to have the panel ask me some questions occasionally. If that seems too silly for you, you can imagine it's you, your actors. You are asking me this question. So I'm going to respond to some of my panel's questions for you. Here's one of them. Can I make a movie without legal stuff? Let's see. Of course you can. You get a camera and you film something, that would be a movie, right? I stood over there and filmed some of you. I know actually quite good at iMovie. <laughs> oh, do I have to pay to use that? Um, and I, I could actually you know, do some things, right? No legal stuff. Will I be sued is a question you often ask a lawyer. No lawyer will answer that with anything except, how do I know? Find a lawyer to sue somebody, and you will find a lawyer to sue somebody. It's not hard to do. <laughs> somebody will sue you, sue someone if you want them sued. It's being sued isn't, isn't there's no get out of jail free card to not be sued. It just, that, that's not how the rules work. Once you're sued, you get into court, and then you hopefully get out of court with the least amount of pain. But just curious, how many people here would look forward to being sued? Thank you. <laughs> How many of you would like to have a cease and desist letter presented to you for your work? If you've never seen one, <laughs> look what happened with Katy Perry and the left shark. It's online, um, so I'm not revealing anything. These are, they're like, they're so painful. All right, everyone's using it. I can use trailers though, right? I can use trailers for everybody. That's, 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 it's free, it's online. It's, they're all doing this, they're all doing this. I don't know if you can use that particular thing just because someone else did, and I don't know if they've been sued. Those aren't the kinds of questions a sophisticated person is going to get answered because the answers aren't there. Can I do it? Absolutely. Am I going to be sued? I know somebody who could help you in that if you are. But these are not easy to work with. Oh. So why bother with all this? It's a lot of junk. It's a lot of junk. Here's why. I assume you're all about to make a movie or would like to make a movie or know more about making a movie, some format, right? You may be actors, you're about to be something else. You may be writers. You may be directors, actors, writers. You may be producer, director, and I'll bet you are also financiers. <laughs> Your hard earned money, right? Some of you maybe have trust funds, if so, Talk to your neighbors, they'd like to know you too. This is your hard earned money you're spending on this. Why are you going to do it? Because you want something to come of it. You want something to happen. You're even imposing on your friends. Come on, don't tell me you're not or you're about to. Come on, just a couple hours, can I borrow your camera? All of this is a great deal of work. You are now a producer. There's a reason the Producers Guild just puts a few people up on that stage to collect that Oscar. It's icky. <laughs> It's hard work. It's this stuff I'm going to talk about. It, getting that money together, worrying about all the personalities, all this paperwork, uh, and with the hope and dream you'll have a final product that will result in something with any luck, fame, and fortune. Something. That's what a producer does. Now acting is looking better, isn't it? <laughs> it's not easy. It's a lot of work, and some of this is what they have to do. I'm not going to talk about film finance because at your level, you're all doing something different for financing. I know that. So why bother? Here's another reason to bother. An injunction means stop it. No more distribution, no more exhibition, pull it from the festival. An injunction is something a judge issues because you're violating my rights, they'll pull the whole film. They might even sue you. Oh, I don't have money. That doesn't slow people down. They may sue the people who financed you. Aunt Susie. That dentist. Why? Because they've got the money. All nasty stuff you don't want to get into. You just don't want to go down that road. Why not do it right? You're all capable of doing it right, or at least being of where right is. So if you don't do it right, you did it with your eyes wide open. Oh, in addition, people think they can put things up on the internet and you know, on the internet, how hard can this be? It can come down like this. The copyright holder simply has to send in a form letter. It's a takedown letter. It's real easy to do. And the internet service provider will take it right down. Well, maybe I'll make money anyway. Let them figure it out. 
I, who's got the time, who's got the money, ew, these people are going to make a lot of money, let them worry about this stuff. They might even take your product. And you'll see this little clause somewhere buried in the agreement. That's taken from a real distribution agreement. Short, to the point, I can tell you what it means. It means if you don't have all the documents, you don't get paid. But what are those documents? You see a list there? No. To their satisfaction. Oops. You may have distribution, but you don't have money. Here's your question. And my observation. You can make it. You can own it. But if you're taking things you're not entitled to have, if you're not following the rules, I can't help you. Fixing it is very hard to do. Here's why. If anyone comes up to you and says, thank you so much for volunteering. Your help was amazing. Really appreciate it. Not only that, but this little film, who knew, is winning awards like crazy. They want to turn it into a feature. They want this to be, I got great offers on this. But I need you to sign this piece of paper for the distributor. And you will say, let me get this straight. You're going to get really rich. But I'm holding the piece of paper that's going to get in your way. People don't sign those rapidly. This is the time they're going to ask you for a little extra help here. They got problems. They need a little more money. As opposed to early on, when you're doing your short, your whatever you're putting together, it's not hard to get people to sign things. It's a lot easier than when there's money moving around. So why not do it then? In addition, sophisticated investors won't touch anything unless the paperwork's in order. Maybe Aunt Susie doesn't know better. Nobody's told her she might get sued. They know. They know. You have to have it in order. And get it right from the beginning. Fixing it later, not going to work. What er is it that we're talking about? We are talking about this. I tried Googling it before I came to see what you would see. Don't. It's, it's a buzzword in this business. Chain of title showed up in the distribu distribution agreement. We know what it is, but we're not going to actually lay it out very clearly. It is everything. It is the rights to everything in your media. Everything. You will probably own the final product, or your company will. But everything on the screen, everything heard, and everything that got to that end before it is owned by somebody. That's your chain of title. That's what chain of title means. All that stuff on the screen. I can't believe everybody does this. Yes, they do. They do. And sophisticated filmmakers, when you look at their film, you'll realize it's happening and you don't even know it until you start to look for it. Example, the 1984 movie Repo Man, personal favorite, the grocery store scene. Right? OK. Actors go into the grocery store, and it's a, like a 7-Eleven, but it's not. And a sea of packages, all white, and they say coffee, cereal, milk, eggs, peaches. Adorable. It's a joke, but it's this. It's, we don't have the rights to all those things. It works. It still worked. So there are ways to do it. When the car is there, you don't have to zoom in on the Mercedes label. You wish, right? You don't have to do that. When you're using a script, and you probably have a script, even if it's notes, even if, even if your vine is based on a little note, where did that come from? A book? Well, if it's my book, you're going to hear from me. A newspaper article? Where did it come from? And on and on and on. That's our chain of title. And that's what we're going to talk a bit about today, because that's the stage most of you are at. You're not distribution yet, but you don't want to get to distribution and now find out you needed stuff. Okay, that's what I'm going to focus on a bit. So you spot the issues. So in sum, don't ignore it. Whatever that is, don't ignore it. It's all the stuff. I don't have to do that. This is what I hear from film students all the time. But it's just my student film. It's just my student. Just the, it doesn't really matter. Yes, it does. The same laws and the same rules apply. 
And I talk to you just like I talk to my clients and everyone else. I firmly believe there is an excellent chance, just like you do, that what you're working on is going to lead to fame and fortune. It is going to change this industry. It is going to make your career and the career of everybody who worked on it. It is going to win awards. It's going to turn into the biggest, best blockbuster feature and sequel after sequel for the rest of your lives. I have to believe that because it's the same attitude for every picture. The same laws and rules apply. You can't get sloppy on it. You can't pretend it doesn't matter. For me, you're all winning the Academy Award. And it has happened, actually. <laughs> it has happened. So. You need to take it as seriously as I do because it matters to you too. More questions for me. Can I use this in my film? Do I need permission? Who owns what? There you go, you're getting closer. Can I put this thing in? Don't give me reasons why you think you can. Why do you think you can't? What makes you think there might be a problem here? Maybe you need permission from someone, and if so, who? Who's gonna give you permission? Let's see. Where does your media come from? For my purposes, I divide it into three chunks. Remember, I'm not creative. I'm sure you've got a much wilder <laughs> list than I do. But for me, it comes in three big chunks. It comes from stuff that really happened, reality. This, this, there was a real accident. There was a real fire. There was a real crime. There was a real trial. There was, you name it, war. Things really happened. It's somebody's story. Somebody stood there, and it happened. Every couple of decades, I use in my class, the baby fell down the well. Every few decades, this happens. This is, this is a story. Interesting. Human interest, right? Or sometimes it comes from something else. More and more. It com uh, movies based on the videos, based on the comic books, based on the, 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 the and back and back and back. Um, I like Hairspray. Hairspray was John Waters' little film in the what, 70s or 80s in Baltimore. Movie, play, another big movie, more places. <laughs> it just keeps moving. It keeps moving, but it's all based on one. It starts off with one product, right? Came from someplace. What are you basing it on? An article, TV show, something. And there's that rare, rare, rare item, which I'm told exists, original ideas. People swear, no, I've got a lot of that. That's kind of, uh, people promise me that they sat in their room and you know, typed it up. I gotta believe them. You know, okay, as long as you, I, I believe my clients, you, you, you don't know, what, you didn't get this from somewhere. Right? Blurred lines, right? Where did you get this from? I, I, you, you sure? You sure? You didn't read this somewhere. Right? Okay, you may, this is an original piece. So this is, so this is the first one then. There's nothing to go back to. It's this one. Okay, I understand. Back to real life. What do you care about in real life? There is no privacy law on the books except for a few discrete federal laws having to do with your health care and a few other things. You all have a right to privacy, but it's all made by the courts and a few statutes in various states. It ain't easy. But you kind of know when your privacy is, ew, it's not working out, right? I stood over there and videotaped you guys twice. This audience has been videotaped twice. So keep that in mind. I have you on film. I have you. The actors are like, yeah, right. <laughs> um, but some of us have a sense of leave me alone. Imagine, what if it's your child? Leave me alone. Leave my child alone. Leave my mother alone. Leave whatever it is alone. Just, that's what privacy is, the right to be left alone. And the courts respect that in various jurisdictions in various ways. But that's the concept we're all working with. What is this privacy thing, right? So remember the other side when you're doing your films. Somebody may have a sense of privacy here, and they actually have laws to back them up, made by the courts. They have a right they can enforce. You have a privacy right to enforce if you can identify yourself. Something terrible you say about law professors is not my right of privacy. You know, generic law professor cartoon is not. But if it's one that looks a lot like me, we're getting awfully close here. This might be a problem, because I identified myself. That's me. And if I think it's me, you may be invading my privacy. Very good chance you are, unless I said it's OK. If I gave you my consent, have a nice day. I'm standing here. Arguably, I've given my consent for this video. and. They made me sign a piece of paper, actually. But you don't respect people's right of privacy by invading it. 
And all they have to do is recognize themselves. They can start to make a noise. When you look at, even on the news, when you see things like, oh, Americans are all overweight, and you see their big bottoms going down the sidewalk, you don't see one from the other. They're just, who's going to say, that's me? Not going to do it. Right? <laughs> Not going to do it. And that's a good example, because otherwise, you just don't see that happening very often. But right of privacy is the right to be left alone, not just embarrassed, but alone. Leave me alone. Unless there's consent. Ding, ding, our first note to selves. If they consent, go ahead. Did you give your permission for this? You can wave your right to privacy like crazy. You can do terrible things to me <laughs> if I say it's OK. All sorts of things. Now, I took a video of all of you, and many actors are like, happy days, can't get enough of this, no such thing as bad publicity, right? But did you give your OK? No. Just by being here? No. If you think you did, great. But maybe you did. Somebody over here certainly didn't think they did, right? But I think you did because you came here. And you know what? I'm actually doing this really hilarious thing movie thing, video, YouTube, something or other, about how normal people can turn into serial killers. And I need some normal looking people. What just happened? Oops. All right. So watch what you consent to. There are various types of privacy that aren't always obvious. One of them is false light. I have somebody sitting in a park, reading a newspaper. Can I film you with this newspaper? I give my OK for you to film me with the newspaper in the park. You have a headline over it. This park is used by heroin addicts and people selling heroin to high school kids. And there they are. Is, whoops, that's false light. This is what the National Enquirer occasionally runs into. False light. Just because you had a bad looking day does not mean you have a problem. But that is just not true. <laughs> it's not true. It makes. Sure, they're sitting in the park, but you're, you're giving a completely wrong impression of me. That's a form of privacy. Another is disclosure of private facts. It's true, absolutely true, and verifiably true, but it's nobody's business. The fact that someone had a fight with somebody, the fact that their child has a problem, the fact they were ill, the fact that they have a mental illness, all sorts of things. They don't even have to be bad. They can be positive. Where they, where they buried the jewelry, I don't know. All sorts of things are, your, are personal. They're true, but that doesn't mean you can run around with a camera and display it to people. It just doesn't. And that's similar to intrusion upon uh, seclusion. You cannot put your drone up to the fourth floor and peek in the window. That's, I have an estimate that I'm going to be left alone in here, and you cannot do this to me. You can't do it. Just the fact that my window wasn't, my, blind, my blinds weren't all the way quite up, and you have a great telephoto lens does not make it OK. Right? I have a sense of privacy here. So as filmmakers, yes, I understand. There's a lot of things going on out there, and everybody can think of examples where she can't be right. They do that. That doesn't mean somebody couldn't sue them for it. And that shouldn't be you. Right? It's just how do you get this fixed? How do you not? worry about it anymore, consent. And you're taken care of early on. California and a few other states have something called the right of publicity. Here it's a statute. Many states, it's court made. Right of publicity, you all have one in California. That means I can't take that image I just took and your face and sell something. I cannot use your name, likeness, image, any of you, persona, I can't use you for my commercial purposes without your OK. You have value, especially in California, especially actors. You have value. And I can't do that. You can't do it to anybody. That amazing looking person on the street, you can't put that on the t-shirt. They have a right of publicity. They have a right to stop you from making money off of who they are. Okay? You don't have to be a celebrity, just you and me. Name on the milk carton. Oh, I go back. The dead in California also have a right of publicity. Not everywhere else. But because we have so many celebrities, they actually have value after they're dead. I'll wait for that to sink in for a little bit. So, so what I would really like to do is have John Wayne, no, 
What I'd really like to do is, nope, Fred Astaire, nope. They have a post-mortem right of publicity. That's why you don't see them. They have foundations, they have trust, they have all sorts of things supporting this. And your organization helped make this law real. Because you, when you're gone, your persona has, has value and they would like to see your heirs and, you know, take care of that. You worked hard on it. So in California and a few other states, Tennessee and Indiana in particular, this extends for quite a long time, 70 years after death. So you need, if you want to use Marilyn Monroe, you've got to contact the organization that has the licensing rights and pay for it. Anybody seen the wine Marilyn Merlot? Marilyn Merlot, get it? Has a picture of her on it. They had to pay the estate for her image. Yep, right of publicity. And there's good old fashioned defamation. Defamation is something that's been around a long time. Defamation is saying something to hurt someone in, a, in their world. It can be a small group of people. It doesn't have to be announced on television. You can defame somebody in a very small group. You can defame a corporation or partnership, believe it or not, they have rights here. But you can't defame a dead person. You can defame their heirs, so be careful, but you can't defame them. And in this instance, the defense is, it's true. You know, Kathy Heller is a terrible speaker, and here's proof. We have a video of her. Not defamed. <laughs> Not defamed. But perhaps false light, perhaps other things. Feel it? So when you're getting permission, keep in mind, we have a bunch of rights floating around. These are, there's a number of rights you want to keep your eye on um, and make sure that you're not invading them without getting permission. Somebody always asks me about this, so I'll answer it. Don't really bother. For one thing, if someone gets upset about what you did, why did you put the disclaimer there? Why did you think you needed to? Because <laughs> you knew you were doing something you weren't supposed to do. You know, even South Park got sued. I mean, it, disclaimers are, are not your get-out-of-jail-free card. And if you think you're going to do one, find some lawyer that's really going to back it up and you know, guarantee this is going to work. This isn't, this isn't the answer. Okay. And courts is where, it comes, where I get this from. So here's your solution. This is the solution to the list I've just given you. This is most of the list. I'm not just picking and choosing the interesting, cool, like, haha, we can work with these few. The list is, we're covering it pretty well. Why not get permission? I, I, that's always a good question, right? Why didn't you? Because I didn't think they'd give it as a terrible answer. Mm -hmm. So you want consent. What are, they, what are you getting permission to do? What is it you want to do? I'm going to talk to you as producers, not as people who are giving permission, because it's easier. As producers, you want permission to do everything you can possibly think of, if they're willing to give it, as broad as possible, because you never know. Today we're doing our, you know, our short. Who knows where it goes from here? Maybe I'll fold that short into the feature. Maybe we're gonna, all sorts of things might happen. Somebody wants to give me a lot of money for this, so I'm going to sign it to make it a TV show. Who knows? So get as broad a possible co consent to do as many things as you want, certainly to exhibit, to to display, to, to you know, think down the road, anything you can think of. If they're willing to give you all that, take it. Absolutely take it. Um, and then a release. A release says, I'm not going to sue you. You have my permission to do all these things, and I'm not going to sue you for privacy, defamation, false light, intrusion. Make your list. I'm not going to sue you for that. I hereby agree to this. I not only give you this consent, I'm not going to sue you for these things. You'll see it in agreements all the time. And now look for it. Make sure it's doing what you want it to do. Make sure you get the rights you want, as broad as you can get, but certainly what you need. And then get the release with it as well. I'm not going to sue you. Okay. Get permission from everybody. Just do it. Just do it. Get permission from everybody. Why would you not? Because actually, as people say, well, because we make them look good. What's that? You don't have to get permission because you're insulting them. That doesn't work. It does, it's, it's just not OK. And there's various ways to do it. I know sometimes there's a huge crowd. There's a big sign. Leave now if you don't want to be filmed. Sometimes with a big crowd, you've got an unwieldy thing. I don't think many of you are going to be doing an entire baseball stadium. But if you've got a, a large group, they can all sign the same piece of paper with a date, 
this. They can all sign the same piece of paper. Why not? What about B-roll? I'm not actually sure. I get different versions of what B-roll means, so I'm not sure there's a standard definition. Um, my understanding was it's just sort of generic stuff that you can buy, or maybe you take generic stuff. But if it's generic stuff where I see myself in it, it becomes less generic as far as I'm concerned. I know it's me. I don't know if I'd call that B-roll. If it's landscapes or you know, you know, mulling about where you can't identify anybody in particular, fine. But if it's me, I'm, I, I can't tell you that's going to work. Uh, yes, I know there are those who say, oh, it's a park, so they're asking to be filmed. I am not in that park to be filmed. Let me take it a step further. I may not want to be seen in that park at all. Maybe some of you here are not with your spouse, and I have a video of you. Feel it? <laughs> that is not a good idea. Call it B-roll if you like. Get my permission, or I'm coming, or my lawyer will. Here's what you need to make an agreement enforceable. The essence of a contract is this. If some of this is missing, you may not have an actual contract. Parties. Who is entering into the agreement? Be careful. Be really sure. Is this everybody who's agreeing? Is it the right people? And by confident, I really should just put minors. Nobody under the 18 is, is entering into agreements. This is California. 18 is a minor. You're all members of SAG. You know how strongly they protect minors. They're minors. You can be very drunk and still be confident, but minors, no. All the parties. Is this a production company? Is that the party? Have you set up a company of some kind? Then that's the party, not you personally. Who am I taking the picture of? Them? Then they sign it. And whoever the parties are is who signs it. Simple, I know, but you can't believe how easy it is to not do that. How easy it is to drop the ball somewhere along the way. Oh, I'll just sign it for them. Whoops. Somebody signs for the company who doesn't have the authority. Just make sure the right people are signing. Um, consideration. Consideration is a big, stupid word. It means in exchange for something. What, what's the point? Many of you are going to be filming with free labor. Lucky you. There is no such thing as free labor, <laughs> not for as far as I'm concerned. Free labor is gaining rights in your production. Free labor may appear on screen. Free labor is still part of your film. Consideration doesn't have to be money. It can be the lunch. It can be credit. It can be DVD when and if available, the opportunity to work here. They're doing it for some reason, you know, repay a favor, I don't know. It could be all sorts of things, but it gets vaguer the further, further along I get. And sometimes it gets pretty remote. And remember, you're going to win the Academy Award. So Johnny, who's carrying the stuff around and got paid zero, excuse me, I was promised all sorts of things, is going to sign a piece of paper. right? And because you don't have money and, you know, why go down that road with the checks and everything? Lawyers have come up with a little buzzwords to get you out from under that, and there they are. For good and valuable consideration, receipt and adequacy is hereby acknowledged. That's the DVD. It's the, I don't care what else you do. It's the lunch, the opportunity. But there is now consideration. Sometimes you'll see one dollar in other good and valuable. I don't, it's going out of fashion in large part because that meant money exchange, but because it's hard to keep track of that dollar. People actually said, I didn't get the dollar. So don't do that. Really, really promise you'll write down what's agreed. Don't get cute about it. Don't, you know, oh, well, I didn't know. I did. What are you agreeing to? You may film me in this room between this time and this time. And here's what you can do with it. That's what we're agreeing to. What are you exactly agreeing to? Don't imagine it, write it down. In English, it's not hard. What is everybody agreeing to do? It solves a lot of problems later when they say, but you promised, but I didn't know. Yeah, it's, you signed it. What did we agree to do? I got a credit, sure enough, there it is. I have a credit. Dates, check your dates. What date is this agreement happening? This agreement made on this date, signed on this date. What date are they supposed to do whatever they're supposed to do? You're working April 2nd to 5th. Is another date. Get it in there. I didn't know. I didn't know. And now you still have to pay them. 
I didn't know, I didn't know. What date is you're supposed to bring the couch over? Whatever they're supposed to do, make sure your dates are all true. Right. It's, it's, I told you this is going to get a little draggy, but without it, they don't show up. You can't call them up and wave this at them. And make sure your signatures match your parties. <laughs> so I have to add that one. Oh my god, look at that. <laughs> That's taken from a real contract. Nobody reads this stuff. You could write it more simply, and that's fine. But what this means is whoever is signing that piece of paper, including Johnny the volunteer, Johnny, the 18-year-old now volunteer who looks and sees you driving around in the Rolls Royce and gets upset, signed a piece of paper saying he will not prevent the exhibition and distribution and marketing of that picture. He can sue you because you were mean to him or didn't pay him. That, that's a whole other matter. But he cannot enjoin it. Distributors insist on this. Why? Because why else would they spend any money on you? That's not the perfect one. It's just one I grabbed. But watch for them. You will not enjoin. Just get it in there. Johnny the volunteer will not enjoin your picture when you're driving the rolls. What a comfort, huh? It does upset people when somebody else got really rich. Media from existing material. That's what many of you are, are working with. It was a book. It was, a, you know, the video game is now the movie. The game, movie is now the video game. The, the, the newspaper article is the script, is the this. Every movie is based on something, usually a script. That's ex some other existing material. Now it's a movie. It's adapted from that. And sometimes it goes back and back and back. The list can go way back. This was at first something that happened back when, and then somebody wrote an article, and then somebody turned that article into a book, and then somebody turned that, you know, all right, where did it come from? Dig back. That's your chain of title. Dig back. That's why we love the one who actually, sure they made it up. They keep going, because everybody along the way owns something. And your movie has to have the rights to whatever you're using. So work your way back. Is it copyrighted? Can I use it? Maybe you can. Maybe you can get permission to use it. This is what we're going to talk about. US has copyright. Most countries have copyright. Almost all of them do. And most of the copyright in most of the countries is similar but not identical. I'm going to talk about California. I'm going to talk about the US. Everybody should keep in the back of your mind there's other places on this planet. But mostly in our agreements, we say California law applies. Why? Because it's more sophisticated in our business. It's, it, it really it gets what we do a bit better than some other country, you know, states and places. Um, so I'm safe doing it, but don't you all forget that there's other things floating around. Um, and I'm not expert on any of them. To be copyrighted, it must exist in tangible form for at least a moment. What does that mean? Who owns the copyright in this? Me. I created it in a tangible form. Who owns the copyright in what I just said if you wrote it down? You. That's the tangible form. Follow? He created something in tangible form. There's a reason they don't let you go to live performances and record them. Who owns that? Whoops. There's a problem. As soon as it's created, and don't forget, as soon as it's created, copyright is owned. That moment, the moment it's created in a form. The cache on your computer has been determined. Remember the thing that stays for a little while and then fs away? During that period of time, a copyright is created. Okay? A copyright is a federal law. There are no state laws. It's a federal law. It's been around since the Constitution. And the law changes a bit over time, but the concept doesn't change much. To get a copyright, it has to be at least somewhat creative. Something has to happen there. It's not just you know, a stick man. We've kind of done, been there, done that. But, you know, stick man's coming on. Happy Face would have been copyrighted, <laughs> but I can't remember why it wasn't, but it might have been. Um, too late now. But you have to come up with something new and different and interesting. Um, and it exists from the first moment. Just FYI, a lot of things have copyrights. Lots of stuff. Buildings. The Disney Concert Hall. The Chrysler Building. 
the Hollywood sign. By the way, it has its own website. You, you're welcome to pay them to film the Hollywood sign. Many things have copyrights, things you wouldn't necessarily expect. I have no idea what the backstory is on why pantomime has a copyright, but there must be one. I only thing I know about ship's hulls is it was added by then Congressman Sonny Bono. But I don't know much about the rest of these. But these all have copyrights. They you know I can't use it. It's somebody owns something. There's something going on here. But not for everything. Not only do I not have what I said to you in tangible form, I'm telling you what I think. It's kind of my idea. It's my idea. Now this to you as filmmakers should start to ring some bells. I have a great idea. It's Titanic meets Little Miss Sunshine. Let me tell you all about it at the Ivy. Let me tell you all about it. What just happened when somebody wrote it down? You have a right in your idea? Oops. Oops. The, the pitch is a bit of a problem. Write it down. Write it down. Get some ownership rights here. Titles are not copyrighted. Yes, you can do Titanic. But they may have trademarked it. They'd be silly not to. They may have, like Superman. Some of the, the, especially the ones that have sequels and on and on, they tend to do that. MPAA has a list that its members sign saying we won't take other people's titles, but you're not a, personally probably not a member. So titles are not copyrighted, but perhaps trademarked. Scientific formulas, E equals MC squared. Have a nice day. It's just not. It's not. History is facts. What day is today? What happened yesterday? But if I wrote down my version of it, now we got something. But a fact is a fact. Just be careful whose version of the fact it is. If you weren't there, you're probably getting the reality from somebody else. So now we have a chain of title issue. Okay? Calendars, rulers, all those things, cookbooks, yada, yada. So how do people do these? Why do they do them? Because they impose on top of them something creative. The calendar has pictures of firemen on it. The cookbook has artwork in it along the edges and my little story about what I did. They create something. It's minimally creative. It's copyrighted. But the ruler itself isn't. Ruler is a ruler. Public documents. Most public government documents are yours to enjoy. That's why it's called public with a slight caveat in that some things that the government owns are copyrighted for another reason, um, like a book in the Library of Congress, obviously would be owned by whoever owns the copyright in it. A trial transcript, however, is yours to enjoy. Have a nice day. That's yours. The OJ trial, I like as an example, because now it seems so ancient to my students, but the OJ trial, that transcript is yours. Have a nice day. If you're going to write about this, if you're going to use it, be careful, because if you take those characters and move them, all those personal rights might come into play. Right? Follow? So you're going to take those, those lawyers and take them home and have them have a you know, discussion with their spouses. Whoops. Now you have a whole other set of issues. Perhaps. Okay. What does a copyright owner get? They get these rights. This is what the copyright law says. Only they can do it or let somebody else do it. Make copies. A derivative work is an adaptation, based upon, based upon. It gets its own copyright if it's authorized. I'm giving you permission to make a movie out of my script. It gets its own copyright. I gave permission. It's all working. Make copies. Public, publicly perform. Okay. Only they can do it. Founding fathers created this for a reason, because they were copyright owners. Slightly different concept. Ew, ew, all these rights. Ew, there's nothing I can do. There's, no, there's a lot you can do. There's a lot you can do. There, I've heard it said, oh, there's only like 10 or 12 stories and everything's a variation on it. You know, boy meets girl, boy loses girl, boy gets girl. Coming of age, it's all, it's all you know, same old, same old. Yeah, yeah, same old. That's OK. That's OK. But you can't use somebody else's version of it. You can't use theirs and slightly modify it. Here's an example. Cinderella is a very old story, right? As is Sleeping Beauty. As, these are what? It's a grim? Old fairy tales. <laughs> old fairy tales. Be careful. If your image is Disney's image, you have a problem. 
It's not what the story says. It's their version of it, right? But you can come up with some variations on these. Yes, of course you can. You can use the same stuff. But if you get too close, same boy meets same similar girl. They both had a German Shepherds. They both then went to boarding school. They, watch out. You're doing it. Too close. So do not, do me a favor, do not then go check if you got too close. That's actually like making it much worse. Just be creative. Do your own thing. Don't, don't do this. <laughs> As it happened once. Copyright begins at the moment of creation and it has a statutory end. That end keeps changing. At the very beginning of copyright in this country, it was 16 years. It keeps changing. Copyright is like a piece of property. It is, if you think of it as a square acre, if you owned an acre, absent regulations, what could you do with your acre? You could divide it into one inch squares. You could give someone permission to tent on it. You give a lot of people permission to tent on it and then go away. You could sell pieces of it. Right? I'm gonna sell, you get four inches, you get eight inches. You can use three inches but not exclusively, you have to share with this person if they want to use it. I can, I can use it in a lot of different ways. I can divide it up. I can lease it. We call that a license for a copyright. You have permission. If I'm leasing my property to you exclusively, it's going to cost more. You're the only one with a tent here. Not exclusively means other tents are going to come in. I'm making more money, but you're not as happy. You're going to pay less. Copyright, identical. You can divide up all over the place. I have the non-exclusive right to make a short film and exhibit it at festivals for two years. It's not expensive. I have the exclusive right to make all motion pictures in perpetuity. It gets a lot more expensive. Right? You can buy the copyright. It can be transferred. You own it now. They go away. Or you can get permission to do various things. Exclusively, non-exclusively. Exclusively being an expensive word. Some things have to be in writing. I make a note to you that verbal agreements are enforceable. California, is, you can agree to all sorts of things verbally, scary as that is. You can even amend a written agreement verbally, so that lunch at the Ivy isn't, you know, <coughs> take it seriously. Um, but some things have to be written to be, to be valid. One of them is a copyright assignment, just like selling your property or your car. You don't do it verbally. It has to be in writing, and exclusively has to be in writing. It's too important. Gee, I have the exclusive right to shop around this script. You better have a piece of paper. Because you don't. Right? And if you have a non-exclusive, everybody else can shop it around too. But if you have a non-exclusive, it goes without saying, no one else can have an exclusive. Because it's already out. Right? Notice of copyright, you don't need it. You don't have to do it. I suggest, and it doesn't have to be in this format, this is kind of the standard old-fashioned issue way of doing it. You don't have to do it. Um, it used to be when you submitted a script to anywhere, they would print it out and they put this brown piece of paper on the top and big clamps on it. And the big clamps had sharp edges and the top pages always fell off. And they'd have stacks of these things without the top pages. And writers who just put their identifying names on the top pages, I, what were they thinking? <laughs> we didn't think that they were special, that everybody's going to know that's theirs. I don't know. Now it's a lot of it's on iPads and things. So what I recommend everybody do is at the bottom in the footer, you can do it, put your information. I'd even put my phone number in the footer. Every page, your computer will do it for you. Why not? This you don't need legally. It doesn't do you much. But it's notice that you own this. Open up your computer program, stick it in the footer. If you don't have it on your computer, go to Kinko's, and for almost no money, you can get a stamp. Otherwise, when you start to hand around scripts or hand around your other information, it's gone. Gee, that was mine. <laughs> no, now it's mine. <laughs> it's mine now. So stick it in the footer. It's not hard to do. Stamp it on. And you, you're welcome to use Kathy Z. Heller. I don't rec you know, It's up to you. I don't, it's up to you. Who owns a copyright? Finite list. Whoever created it, by definition. Whoever created it, that's theirs. And it's inherited for the life of the copyright. It goes on. Just like any other piece of property, just like the dirt goes on, the copyright goes on. Or an employer under two 
clear circumstances. Gee, you are working for me doesn't work. Copyright law is real clear about this. Your job is to be a writer and I'm your boss. I work in-house. That close. Gee, we talked about it and you said you'd be happy to write for me is not an employee relationship. You work for me as a writer. There you go. You work for me as a writer, as an employee writer. I give you W-2s. There's your test. Are you giving them W-2s to write for you? Now you have a writer. Otherwise, they're probably independent contractors. You're all familiar with how that works, except here we have a little glitch. Copyright is owned from the moment of creation. Now that you're writing, you own the copyright. Gee, I'd like to hire you to finish it. What about the half that's already written? Who owns that? The writer. Watch it. A work made for hire has to be, I think I actually gave you some law. Oh, I, maybe I didn't. Maybe it's coming up. Work made for hire has to be in writing. And I cannot tell you how strongly I recommend, I don't have cases to cite, that you do it in advance. How do you retroactively a work made for hire? Point is, it's from the moment of creation. It was already a copyright, and now we're transforming it somehow? It's, it's, that's not how it works. I'm hiring you to write for me. It's, it's a work made for hire. Good and valuable consideration. Don't care. Who owns the copyright? You do. You own a script someone's going to be doing some edits on? Work made for hire, or they own their edits. What? <laughs> the Writers Guild knows how this works. <laughs> They're on it. So yeah, they own this, this, they created it. Be careful. Okay, written agreement, work for hire. Write it down and put the words work made for hire in it. There can also be co-owners, so watch out for some of those. If you're working with somebody else and writing a script or something or other, the WJ website has a lovely, lovely form you can use to organize how you relate to each other. Why bother? Because if something takes off, someone's career takes off, somebody wants to take a job with this script and the other one doesn't, the other one's a co-owner of the copyright, <laughs> just get it, sort it out early. Who does the negotiation to sell it? The website, the WJ website will walk you through it. It's nice and simple. But if you're working with, with a collaborated, Collaborative writer, get that sorted out right away before it becomes, again, a drama. Okay. Oh, here it is. This is exactly what the actual law says, and I promise no more law, I'm pretty sure. It says, if the parties expressly agree in a written instrument signed, that it shall be. Otherwise, it's not. You have to buy it. I'm hiring a writer. Do that. How long does copyright last? I don't know. I th this takes a copyright expert. Generally, rule of thumb, 70 years after the author's death. But boy, this is a tough one. This is, ugh, this is really hard. It changes for a work made for hire. I don't know when it'll ever end. It just keeps extending, in part because in the United States, there is a lot of really valuable intellectual property that has been around a long time. And those companies protect their intellectual property. Extend it more, extend it more. So hard to say when it's going to end, but I, generally 70 years after the author's death. Really, really old book, you might have something there. Hard to say for sure, but roughly. And nobody knows, the, this goes on and on in detail, but I'm giving you a sense of it. I recommend if you have any rights in a copyright, a copyright itself, a license, you purchased it, register at the copyright office. It is so low tech, it's sad. You can all do it. Copyright.gov. They couldn't make it easier. It's $30, I think. It's no more. The form could not be easier. Actually, I had some of my law students do it, and it was too simple. They like overthought it. It's real straightforward. It's real straightforward. If you assign it to your company, Company then owns the copyright, send in the form. Maybe it's all of $100. Why bother, since you already own the copyright? Notice. Notice, notice. If no other reason, notice. Somebody tells me they're going to get an option on something. They're going to buy something. This is a really good idea. I'm going to go get this. As I'm talking to them, I go to copyright.gov, and I can see the chain of title that's been registered. No, you're not. <laughs> 
<laughs> Somebody's got an option on it right now. It's not expired. Or don't pay them a nickel till you get information on all this stuff. Why not? For $30, it's yours. I know that people do register the things at WGA. That's fine, and it's and more secret. I get that, um, and, and it doesn't cause you, you know, sure, of course, why not? But it's not the same as looking it up. <laughs> there it is. We've got it. In addition, by filing it at the Copyright Office, if you do have to sue, God forbid, it's prima facie evidence of ownership at some point, and with any luck, you're so successful, you have a customs issue, but customs will keep piracy if it's registered already, okay? Just do it. It's thirty dollars, and it's a silly, silly simple. Public domain. This is the next. Somebody's thinking. Oh yes, but what about all that stuff that I can use in the public domain? Things are in the public domain. Public domain means public can use it, enjoy it, do what you want with it. It's in the public domain, and stuff is. Old stuff. Copyright expired. It's over now. Copyright terms used to be shorter. It's over. It's in the public domain. It's something that can't get a copyright. It's you know one of that one of those things on the list. It doesn't get copyright. It's a transcript from the court. It is, this is in the public domain. Enjoy yourself. Some owners dedicate things to the public domain. They go, oh, we know you just everybody enjoy themselves with this. I don't know how you find that out because I've never actually seen that happen. But I hear it. It's actually possible. It might be in the public domain. Public domain is everybody gets it. I will tell you though, be careful a little bit. Um, Plato's Dialogues, what is it, 400 BC? Public domain, everybody, what do you think? Um, but notice, it's Greek, ancient Greek on papyrus, right? right? I don't know about you, but I don't work in that medium. So you're getting it from somewhere else. You're getting a translation. And somebody's interpretation into that translation, oops, be careful. Right? You're too old and you may have a problem. Uh, doubling back. Where did you really get it from? Oh, oops. I don't read the ancient Greek. I just, a client actually tell me they did. So, okay, fine. But be careful that just old isn't necessarily good enough. Okay. And fair use. Anybody know what fair use is? You're scared, right? I wish somebody would tell me. This is a tough one, but I hear it all. The, I know what I'm about to tell you, but I hear this. Oh, like, we can do that. We can use trailers. That's fair use. Well, we can use it as. Where are you getting this from? It sounds fair, you know. So it's sort of like fair, it's like fair. But this is a, it's in the statute. It isn't fair? Isn't just because it sounds like it's a good idea? It's fair. And by the way, when you start to think about how come I can't use that, imagine if that thing was yours. When you make these films. And I go get it and put my name on it. How are you going to feel about it? And start selling it. How are you going to feel about it? So you know, remember how this works. It's, it's, it's a two-way street when you have the product, too. Fair use. Fair use is actually in the federal statute. And, and before I get that, I want to remind you of a couple of things. One is multi-layered works. That's my way of, it's actually a buzzword. But what a multi-layered work is, it's a combination of a variety of rights. It's a wonderful life is a movie, right? It slipped into the public domain. There was a period of time when you had to renew your copyright. Somebody didn't. That happened to a variety of films. Is the music? Oops. No. Derivative works. I heard this story years ago. I hope it's true, because I like it so much. Charlie Chaplin's films were going to go into the public domain. Back then, the reel was this big, and they you know, drove them from studio. Piracy, not so much a problem, but they were this big, and they get moved around. He called them all back in, rescored, and refiled as a derivative work. Started the copyright over. I hope it's true, don't you? I hope it's true. Because you would think, Charlie Chaplin, my God, not so fast. So, so you, know, you can't assume. Then there's this little item that's sort of an awkward moment for all of us, and that's orphan works. We can't figure out who owns it or what it is. I found this great book at the bookstore, used bookstore. The first publisher page is missing. I love it. Can't I use it? And you, for the life of you, you can't figure out what to do with it. Sorry. I don't have an answer. It's awkward. There is no real good answer. No way of telling if the author is going to show up and start yelling at you, or their heirs, or that's still. It's, it's, there are things we cannot figure out who to get the rights from. 
I don't know what to tell you about. They're hard to figure out, and occasionally people try and solve it through legislation. It's not easy. And I'm reminding you laws outside the US. Something might be incredibly well protected in another country, just never, not here. We didn't, wasn't published here. Previous laws applied or something. Okay. Here comes fair use. This is exactly what the statute says. It's this simple. Don't you love that when that happens? Fair use of a copyrighted work is these things. News reporting is not you. Gee, I'm giving information on something that happened is not a news reporting. News reporting is the news. It's a news station. It's a newspaper. It's the news. You, whatever, even though you might like to think it's newsy, it's, this isn't what you're doing. You're not in the news business. It's not news reporting. You're not teaching. Teaching isn't a classroom. Teaching isn't, gee, it's somewhat educational video. It doesn't work that way. Um, scholarship research, maybe you are. I don't know. You can do those things. Okay, so far not that interesting, right? But the court has factors to look at that maybe we can find some way to let you do this thing. Maybe it will be fair use. This is exactly what courts are told to consider. With a word of caution to you, you can make an argument that your stuff is going to fit into all of these or some of these, a really good one. That doesn't mean the court's going to like your argument. And the key word I used here was the court. You don't get to say, you can't sue me, it's fair use. Sorry. The only way you know is that the court tells you so. You're right, you win, it's fair use. You may find lawyers who will back you on this. You know what, we, we research, we're confident that if something comes of this, you're going to be OK. That's still not a get out of jail free card. This isn't, your, this isn't like that. It's not how, it is a defense. Sorry. It's just a defense. Gee, but everybody, yeah, you can try it. But if somebody comes to you and says, no, that's mine. Oh, but it's fair use. Let's go work it out. There isn't a get out of jail free clear answer to this. You're gonna, somebody's going to tell me, oh, but the case of such and such and so and so said it was OK. So maybe if you get before that judge, it's going to be dandy. But it's very hard to prove fair use. So I'm not going to tell you there's a simple answer to when you've got it and when you haven't. And it's not trailers. It's not trailers. Occasionally, there's, there's ways you can do it. But I can't give you the blanket rule that that's going to work. Okay? So don't count on this. Film students just think everything is fair use. All right. okay. So this is some of the things that the nature of the copyrighted work. What's the thing that you're using? What are you doing with it? Is it for commercial purposes? Well, I'm assuming most of you are filming to make money. So sorry, even though it's not a commercial, you're you know, you want to make something out of this. This is for money. Okay. How much of it are you using? Be careful. If you're using it, it's probably for a reason. Because it's the cool portion. Seven words can bring a whole movie to you. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Seven words. And you're getting the images, right? Have you ever seen these, these Compilations, 100 years of something, 100 years of British film, 100 years of AFI did kissing, I think. 100 years of, and done well, you see th things go like this, and the whole movie comes flying back to you. Just, oh, uh, one scene, just a couple of seconds, and you've got it. Well, then what have we just done? The amount and substantiality of the portion, courts know what you're doing. Courts, I even hate saying it. I hope you never, ever have to go to court on any of this. And what's the market for that? What, what have you done to the market to the underlying material? Have you harmed the market? Probably not. But the court looks at all this and thinks it all through. It, it's, it's a tough one, and I cannot give you rules that I'm sure will work. There are some other exceptions. There's parody, if you're doing an, a, a good parody. But again, if somebody says, well, I'm upset, you still have to go and raise your defense. It's a parody. It's OK. There's another one that's called transformative. There's cases that find it. I can't promise you yours is going to fall into it, sadly. So that's, it's just, why not get permission? I, 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 why not just get it? I, it's, they're defenses. My, my point made, these are defenses. And I think you've got a valid defense. Is that good enough for you? Maybe. Maybe. But that's not the same as, sure, go right ahead, no problem. What are you going to do to get a copyrighted work? Remember, all this stuff you might want to use might be copyrighted. I'm going to take it a step further. Remember, we're talking about creating our scripts. What about the poster on the wall in your scene? 
Who owns that? Somebody. Worse, what about a photograph on the television set? What if it's a photograph of me? I have privacy, and the photographer has a copyright. Ouch, right? With any luck, it's grandma, and she's standing there. She took the picture perfect, the selfie. But think them. Th or here's a simple solution. Take a new picture. What, 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 why, why not have your crew photographer, whose job it is under a work for hire, take a picture of someone who's given you name and likeness rights? Boom. Finished. It's not that hard. Who, what are we supposed to do with this poster? Make a new one. Or maybe you get the rights, I don't know, but make a new one. Okay. Why not? That's what filmmakers do. Because frankly, uh, it's my stuff, I don't want you using it. So be careful with it. So you can get, you can buy a copyright. I can sell, I can buy the copyright in your notes from you. In writing, because it's a purchase. I can get permission from you, which is a license, exclusive or not exclusive. Messy, messy, ew, ew, icky, all this, what, how does the world get, how do we move from point A to point B with all this stuff? How does anybody get anything done? I get it. Ew, ew, let's just, ugh. Well, there's answers, and one of them is at creativecommons.org. Creative Commons is a nonprofit. It's online. Take a look. There are licenses you click to make. You've used them, you've seen them, and you have, it hasn't really registered. It's a wonderful, it's worldwide. Creative people put things up there. They're, you know, they, 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 they pull out the license, put it on their stuff. It doesn't actually hold the material. They put the license on their stuff, and you look at what the license is, what the symbol is, and the website tells you what that means. You can use this stuff any way you like as long as I get attribution. You give me credit for it. You can't use this for commercial purposes. Different licenses. It's a click-through. It's free. And you've used it and don't even know it. It's for copyrighted material, and it's in so many languages. It's, it's a wonderful invention. It's wonderful. You can use it. Put the copyright on your stuff. You can use it as long as I get credit. Done. It's all over the internet. You just zip past it. It's like the terms of service. Who looks, right? It's there. It's there. And it's really nice. That helps things move forward a lot. A lot. And another way things move forward is people don't always enforce their rights, obviously. But again, I assume fame and fortune. I assume Rolls, Bentley, whatever you prefer, you're going to be doing fabulously. And somebody's not going to be happy they're not. I don't want that to happen to you. I want you to be protected. Nor do I want you to get a distribution and say, what is that? What am I supposed to do? How did I get here? No, I want you to get paid. Props. Stuff. Not copyright, but trademark. Trademark is federal. Trademark is state. Trademark is, is a little harder to define, a little harder to put your... You can look at the trademark office, just that it's not there, doesn't tell you anything. But it's stuff. If you have somebody working for you who makes stuff for you, original stuff, they make the tables, they make the whatever it happens to be, there you go, you got stuff. <laughs> Fine. What, there's nothing wrong with it. You're done. End of discussion. If, on the other hand, your, your actors stroll into a bar the worst. Not only do you have all those labels, but you have the shapes of the bottles. You can't tell me you don't know Coca-Cola or Framboise. Or various bottles have various shapes, and they know who they are. Right? It's, it, ugh, bars are really hard to film in. And that's why in, in Repo Man, it's all white. It's part of the joke. But be careful with all those things. Those are rights. It's, it's the opposite of product placement. You don't have permission to put our stuff here. <laughs> Don't. Sophisticated filmmakers, you don't even know what's happening. You don't feel the blur. You don't sense that the things have been turned, the labels are turned, or that they're fake labels. You just don't see it. You have, this is all, those of you who are looking at me like, she must be kidding. Now go back and look. Go back and look. They are, they're in the bar, but you, you show me the Seagram's bottle. It's not there. Unless they paid, you know, so they got it, but it's probably not there. So, trademark, let's see if I can explain it to you. If you can look at something and know what and whose it is, you probably have a trademark issue. This shape tells me it's something or other. This, you know, this design, tell, those golden arches are a tip off. I don't care what you call it. 
You know, what you call it, we all know where you're going with this, right? It's, it's just the way it is. It's what that is. So it's a trademarked item. Similar to copyright, get permission. Harder often, because you've got some big companies. Believe it or not, a lot of big companies have somebody in-house whose job it is <laughs> to get your call. For a mere something something, you can use this. Sometimes it's a credit. Sometimes you're going to get a, they'll be happy with a credit. Sometimes that's plenty. Sometimes it's a lot more. And sometimes it's just not going to happen. Move on. Just move on. You know, this is just not worth it. You have crew, you have friends, make stuff. You won't even know. It's going to work out fine. Work made for hire, though. I'm helping you look at agreements, because you're going to get them from various places. Again, if there was the agreement that would be perfect for all purposes, I'd give it to you. You need to look at these things and see if it's working for you. Remember, there's certain elements that make something a contract. If it's not the right parties, don't bother. If it's not enforceable because it doesn't have consideration, it's just a nice memo. If I write you a note, and I say, get, I'm so glad we had lunch. Thank you so much for this lunch. Just to, just to make sure we all, you know, we're all in the same place. This is our memorandum of understanding, letter of MOI, LMNOP, whatever you want to call the thing. This is just a summary. You know, a summary of what we talked about I was going to write, or I was going to, show, I was going to perform, and, and you had this great script, and you were going to give it to me, and that I would do this, and you were going to pay me $100 a day for three days, and, and uh, I was going to do it these days, and that's what we're going to do. Just this, can you confirm by signing it and sending it back? I don't care what you call it, you have a contract. Your memorandum of understanding is now a binding contract. Your email exchange can create a binding contract. Verbally, you can do them. So don't save a lot of time and trouble by doing your detailed deal memos unless you're sure you're done. Because when I get them from people, here, now you can create the contract. <laughs> All right, but <laughs> what do you want me to do? <laughs> is the other side prepared to even bother looking at it? You have a binding contract. So these are the elements that make you a contract. Then, depending on what you're making it about, what are your terms? Here, trademark. Make sure who gives you permission has the authority to do so. The bartender doesn't. Easy mistake to make. Bartender cannot say it's OK to film those bottles. No can do. Who owns the trademark? Who represents the entity that owns the trademark? Who is it? Where is this coming from? See, it's not easy, but it's definitely not the guy standing behind the bar. Make sure it's the proper authority. You can even put in your agreement. I confirm I have the authority to sign this. I'll protect you. I'll indemnify you for any damages if I'm lying. Look what you just got. Be clear on what's permitted. I can film in here using those bottles today. Can you distribute it? Can you turn it into a TV show? Can you, you know, fold that into the feature if this is just a short? Which happens a lot. Your short turns into a couple minutes of the feature, and off you go. Other things happen. Um, some people even take their product and divide it into pieces, and then sell those as variations on B-roll. So internal bar scene. That's some money generated all over the place. What, what do you want? Get the rights for what you want. And then imagine you want more. No harm in asking, right? You have a great chain of title. Congratulations, I love it. One more thing I want you to think about is who has this chain of title. If you're producing, it's probably you. You signed the agreements. You probably did. Depending on what's at stake and how much you want to spend, you might want to form an entity. In California, if you have a company, that means you have a limited liability company or a corporation where the articles have been stamped with a date by the California Secretary of State. It does not mean you just filed a DBA. Just saying you have a company doesn't create one. And if you're not paying $800 a year minimum to the Secretary of State, to the, to the tax people, for this to continue to exist, you don't have an entity. It's shut down. You can find out if you have one. 
go to the Secretary of State's website and look it up. Look it up by name. Do I have one? A lot of people think they have companies because it's cool to have a company. Well, you're entering into agreements with something that is not a real LLC or corporation. I don't know what to do with you. I don't know where to go with this. Right? And if you're signing on your, your own name and it should be the company, you might be exposing yourself to this agreement when, in fact, you want the company to be. So think through if you're going to. Why bother? What's the difference? An LLC, limited liability company, is less structured. It has members. However many can have one, have one member. It doesn't have to have annual meetings. It has an operating agreement. You can get formed operating agreement. It doesn't get filed. Secretary of State doesn't see it. No, but tax people don't look at it. It's just sort of how we proceed. You can have a thousand members. They can all manage it, or they can have a manager among them manage it, depending on what the operating agreement says. It's low tech. It's very low tech. Often people set up a limited liability company to do a picture. It's often name of the picture, comma, LLC, that's your tip off. That enters into all the agreements for the picture. And then when big studio comes along and offers a huge amount of money, the ent they can just take the whole entity. So they can sign everything over. It's yours now. <laughs> Off you go. Simple. Gone. Everything sits in this one company. The books are there. Everything's done. All the contracts are there. Easy. Taken care of. Limited liability companies, some people set them up, close them down all the time. Limited liability company can join the guilds. You can be the only member, not hard to do, and you don't need a lawyer to set one up. I wish I hadn't have to say that. It hurts me to say it. Know what you're doing, but at the end of the day, it's filing the articles with the Secretary of State. Corporation, it's an older type of entity. It's more formalized. It has shareholders, officers and directors, Presidents, vice presidents, secretaries, and annual meetings where people are elected and they hold business and they authorize various things to happen. It's more formal, not better or worse. It's just a more formal organization. And depending on your needs, one might make more sense than the other. Um, I have tax in parentheses. That's because the ta they can be similar tax-wise if the corporation's an S corp, but that's not what I do. Um, they're important. Why? Because in addition to a holding rights, they shield their owners from liability. I am very upset about my picture being in your film. I'm suing for a million dollars. I'm suing your LLC, not you and your house. Your house is not exposed. I'm suing the LLC. That's why you do it. That's worth, if you think you need it, that's a good time to have one. The LLC will have some assets, sure, 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 but it's not your house. If I'm suing you personally, I'm suing you and all your assets too. So it's both of them, company, corporation and LLC, shield their owners from liability. If the entity enters into the agreement I'm suing under, that's who I sue. If, you're, if, you're, if you have an entity and when you sign documents, make sure you sign on behalf of the entity by its, its manager, it's something, not just you. Make sure you're, it's the entity. Why? If you think of it this way, my LLC doesn't have any fingers to sign with. No, it has to give authority to somebody. It's, I'm signing it as its member. That's how I got the authority to sign. And it shields you from liability. That's a plus. Okay. Um, and people use them sometimes for loan out entities. I know you're somewhat familiar with that. And that's uh, often for tax purposes and liability purposes and other. But here we're talking about film. They can be shut down very quickly and very easily. You can actually figure it out, and the Secretary of State will help you dissolve it as well if you decide to. It's, sadly, you don't need me for that, but you, I'm, you're welcome to hire a lawyer. So what have we talked about? Personal rights, privacy, and all that means. Defamation. How do you get out from under all that? You get consent and a release from claims. Shh, Kathy might know it's her. Get Kathy's signature. <coughs> Consent. Gone. Low tech. Everybody. Why not? <laughs> and if there's a reason why not, because they won't sign, that should, you know, that should ring a bell. That should be a tip off. We may have a problem here. Why won't they sign? What, they don't want to be in it? Think that one through. Get their permission. It's, it's easy. Most people will sign at this, at this budget level and this early on. It's not so hard. 
or if you're doing reality TV. Apparently, they sign anything. <laughs> um, copyright or trademark. Buy it or get a license to use it. Get permission. License is permission. Exclusive or non-exclusive, depending on how much you want to pay. Just have it say what you need it to say. If someone hands you something that goes on and on and on and on with a lot of junk that has nothing to do with you, that may not be the right document for you. You know, you know all this stuff that has, what are we talking, all I need is this. Where is this? Find it. It should be there. This is the rights I need for the time I need it. And this is what I'm willing to pay for it or not. A reminder, if everybody signs this piece of paper, you have the rights to their name and likeness if they're going to be in the bloopers. What if your crew's in a blooper and they didn't give you permission to be in the blooper? You got a problem. Get Johnny the volunteer to sign an agreement. Name and likeness, fine. Johnny, you sign anything. You know he will. And he has the no injunction. <laughs> He's so excited you can sign it, right? Have him sign. Have everybody sign a piece of paper that has in it what you your, your imagination can go a little bit, or what you think you might need from them. The person that's going to be taking, I said, somebody where, we don't know what we're going to do about photographs, we'll just take it off of social media. Slow down. Everybody can't post their photos and you get to take them down and use them. Feel all the dramas that just ensued? Oh, oh geez, no. No, no. You're going to have somebody whose job it is to take the photos. That's how you're going to do it. So then, you, then they're yours. It's a work for hire. And if you let them go, fine. But they're not some name and likeness. Sort it out. It's not, it's low tech, it's easy to solve the problem early on. When you get to the distributor, where are your documents to support that poster, to support Johnny in the blooper, to, Johnny, do you mind signing this? Go find Johnny. Um, that's the time to do it. Everybody gets it as a work made for hire for the producer or the production company, so you own the results of their services. Work made for hire seems just like a copyright concept, but it's broader than that. The crew who is building the set is creating some rights. You as actors, there are results of your performance. There some, who, who gets that? Who owns that? Yes, you hired me to perform, but you want to make sure as producers that all rights that are floating around come to you. So everybody's doing a work made for hire. You're getting the rights to whatever it is they're doing in the scope within their employment and Anything you might need, just they'll happily sign it. At the, trust me, at this level, they'll sign it. Or get some other volunteer. You guys, I'm confident you all know all about what you need to know for yourselves. 100% confident, but I'm still going to go over it a little bit. And you have a great organization to help you. I'm still going to talk about it a little bit. Actors, all of them, and at your lower budget level, you've got people strolling in and out of the scene. You've got to admit you do. Oh, look, get it, get it, get it, put the... Oh, by the way, don't put the kid in the picture. By the, minors, I already said that, right? You already know better than that. Minors are minors. Big deal. Minors have a whole set of very complex laws. Minors cannot be employed unless you know what you're doing. Minor is under 18. If you need somebody to act under 18, unless it's really, really tiny, there's lots of actors among you that can act under 18. So be careful with minors. You're, just because it... Just because it's your child that it's act, and it's on the weekend, and it's on vacation, none of that counts. It's a minor working. Find out what you're doing from SAG before you get near that. Okay, just get it right. By the way, it includes getting approval of the court and permits all over the place. So it's not just the teacher on the set, so be careful. A little caveat. Okay. So actors are employed. What about the people strolling around? You know, why can't they sign? a day player, background actor, why can't they sign an agreement? Their image is here. They know it's them. They sign too. They want to be on it. They'll sign it. Right. Remember, producers are working too. You need agreements with producers. I agree to produce. I agree to your director. If you are, and I know many of you are, the writer, producer, director, actor, all of those things, that can be one agreement if you like, but do it. And here's one other reason. There's going to be somebody in your in your plan, some bigger actor than you thought you could ever get. Somebody's going to come along and say, fine, fine. But my agent, I think, would say, $100 a day, oh, fine. But I will defer to 1000 What do you care? If that comes out of profits, you only wish that's going to be a problem. Right? With any luck, I have a problem. I have profits and I pay you. I can, to get you, I'll do it. You start deferring. Or maybe I'll give some points. 
Maybe I'll give some to Fine. Out of the profits, you wish you had this problem, like paying taxes because you have so much money. I can. That's a problem I don't mind so much. I can live with that. You might start doing some of those. Don't forget yourselves. You're the writer, producer, director. Get a contract. If other people are getting points, why aren't you? When a studio comes and takes us for distribution, they're going to pay out those points. Where's yours? There are films that go on and on and on and on and on. I actually have rights in a film after 35 years. Twice a year, we stand at the mailbox and applaud. It just they, the money keeps coming in. Why aren't you signing an agreement with your production company or with yourself? It doesn't matter. Getting some of the back end as well. Why not? I don't know why not, but it's easy to forget, especially when you're telling everybody else you're working for free. We'll still work for free, but don't forget the, the points. Don't forget the back end. Everybody has to give name and likeness releases if there's any chance at all, and I just like to toss it in because when the blooper thing scans everybody standing around, because it's hilarious to see Johnny you know, step in the paint can, it's gonna, just stick it in. They'll sign it. Watch out for your writers. I mentioned it before, but some of you are your writers. Some of you are writing with someone else. The script has a copyright for as soon as the words are down. Who owns the script? If you're making this with an LLC, it needs to be assigned. So the chain of title to everything in the film, including the script, is owned by the entity. If it's you and not an entity, and you're writing the script, and you have all the contracts together, then you could, of course, assign it away if you wanted to. If once it's assigned and additional writing is done, that had better be a work for hire. You starting to feel the pattern, I hope? Watch it. It's, it's, it's low tech if you get the rhythm going and just get the pieces of paper moving a little bit. They don't have to be 20 pages, tiny font. Um, a certificate of authorship. This is a, yeah, it might even count as one, I'm not sure. But the concept is, we don't have time to get an agreement. You know, he's going out to, he's going to Aspen to write it. My, you know, just we don't, oh, writing an agreement, how boring. Nobody's got the time. We're starting to write now, with no time for all this. Certificate of authorship is signed by a writer saying that this is a work for hire. Pursuant to the employment agreement, yada, yada. It gets the work for hire thing taken. It doesn't say how much you're getting paid or anything else. It's often within a writer's agreement. But it kind of gets the basic, no matter what, this was a work for hire down. Okay. Even if you're signing it with yourself. <laughs> I'm not a music expert, but there are basics of music. Yes, you need rights. Yes, there are places on the internet that will sell you rights. And yes, there's free music. Make sure it really is. It's not just somebody else stole it from some place and now they're, you get to steal it from a stealer. Um, don't, don't, it's not worth it. Um, but if you're going to use, you know, this, this particular song is the essence of my film, and it does happen. Hustle and flow. The song was the essence of the film. If that's the case, you've got to get right to use the film, the, the music in your film. And you get two rights. The authors of the music and the creators of the record. Go online. They're eager mostly to sell you these. <laughs> Just look them up. You can find the performing rights societies, they'll sell, publishing companies, they'll sell it to you. Uh, it might be expensive, but that's your choice. You can use it or not use it. Yeah. Or you can hire the kid in the garage next door. Not a bad plan, but you still need to get whatever rights you think you need. That's another one will probably sign anything, so you might as well just own the copyright and the composition. <laughs> um, but composers themselves will balance out those rights. You know, you can use this composition in your film. I can use the, I keep the copyright to use for other purposes. That's a cheap version. Um, you can use, you know, we'll co-author the copyright, whatever, co-own, whatever. You find variations on doing it. Many composers know how that works. Make sure you have the rights to do what you want. With one slight caution, if they're giving you the right, the non-exclusive right to use this composition in your film, watch out that there's, just make sure there's something somewhere that, identifies what else they can do with it. You don't want your love story theme that just made the whole film end up in an ad, you'd be the jingle for an ad for toilet paper, I don't know. 
and everybody's humming it, and you know, and that's not what your song is. It's your lovely song. So work it out with them. Just make sure you know who owns what and what you can do with composers' rights. And if you have, hopefully, a sophisticated composer, because if they're using musicians, a whole other set of rights can kick in. Right. Now, you, now composers can often do things by themselves. But just make sure you know what you're doing, um, that, that you have what you need. Two music um, rights agreements you have to have for existing music. Again, just look it up. The, the rights societies are happy to sell you this stuff. Not always cheap. A few words about locations. Locations, it's a type of release. You're not buying the location. You're, ha you're getting permission to use a location. You're getting permission to use it on certain terms and conditions. And they're agreeing not to sue you for trespass. You're get, getting, that's getting the rhythm going, right? That's how it works. They're not going to sue you. <coughs> what can they give the rights to use? Only what they own. They can't give the rights to use the bottles on the wall or the photograph of me, but the building. Make sure the grantor has the authority. It's, again, not the bartender or the renter. <laughs> it's the person who has the authority to do this. The grantor can do it. Right? And just get the specifics down. What if there's damage? Who's doing what to whom? Okay. Um, you can look at this in your packet. This is me just proving I'm not making this stuff up. The kinds of, I just grabbed a couple clauses out of distribution agreements, all of which says, where are your contracts? Where are your contracts? Where are your contracts? Over and, o and over. Where is your contract for this? Where's your contract for that? And until you get us that contract, you don't get paid. These are just a couple grabbed clauses. But they're always there. Why? Because they need liability insurance. They need E&O insurance. Their insurer won't insure them. They don't want to be sued. It's your job to go fix this. So fix it up front. FYI, um, if you're doing a documentary, anybody in here? Those are tough questions for me. <laughs> yeah, those are tough ones. Yeah, because often the subjects of documentary films don't want to be in them. Yeah, this can be tough. And sometimes, you know, low budget and what you want costs a lot. Their documentaries have problems. I recognize that. And some of what I said is like, yeah, sure, but I'm doing a great documentary expose. You know, it's w one thing that's not too difficult is to go get historical material. You know, Ken Burns pays for the photos. It is what it is. But if you if if you have other issues that don't seem to be working out, um, I can refer you to this uh, Stanford Fair Use Project. Um, and I, they do take people in. They will take documentary films, and they, will, they have lawyers, and they have a bunch of people who go through and see if they can get some clearances for them so you can get your insurance and distribution. They're, and there's also the International Documentary Association in L.A. Where's L.A.? There. In L.A. They'll, they, they can also advise you on who might be able to help you. I know that they're, they're somewhat more special than some of the rest of you because you can't really creatively recreate history or work around some of these problems. And the budget's the same. I know you have issues. And another reference, the Creative Commons license. This is me. Here's my pitch. I'm pitching you free services. Um, I'm not begging you to do this, <laughs> but I'm telling you we're here. Um, I, we have the Entertainment Law Clinic at Chapman. We do production legal services for ultra-low budget filmmakers. Not all of them, because we only have limited resources. It is free. It is just free. The only thing we'd ever ask for is reimbursement for actual fees. The Copyright Office, $30. The Secretary of State filing fee for setting up the LLC. You need to have your complete budget. This isn't, this isn't the Kickstarter moment. We do not want to be in your business plan to raise money. It doesn't give my students anything to work on. When you have your budget and a start date for an ultra low, we've done zero budget. Great film for zero budget. Ultra low is under 200. You all define it. We insist everybody join SAG. How's that? Um, because that way the actors are looked after. We don't, I don't have to wonder about what they're doing with the actors. Um, if you, when you have your entire budget to get through principal definitely, and your start date, you can give me a call. We'll see if we can help you with what's called production legal work. You should have had a lot of the stuff along the way so that I, you don't have to tell me you stole the script. 
because that's going to be a problem. But I actually would have screened you. But that, you call me and we'll talk. If we can't help you for whatever reason, I'll let you know. But it, we've done over 50 films. And they all get made because they've got their budget and a start date. So it's easy enough to get them made. They get them done. Production legal means we will help set up an entity, the LLC or a corporate, if you want one. Um, we will do, we'll help with the registering the copyright if you haven't or assigning it to the LLC. Um, we'll do the contracts for employment. What often happens at, at this ultra low level is all of this is a theory until you get the money and then it's like this. Right? Suddenly I need actors, suddenly I need locations. I had an idea but now it's going and that's when we might be able to help you. Not a year out because you don't have real stuff yet. It's a great idea but it's going to change so our contracts are just nothing. Um, but we can, you're welcome to give me a call when you have your budget and start date. Um, ultra low, um, and I'll talk to you about it and see if you're in a spot where we might be able to help. Um, as I said, we're zero budget, so I don't advertise this is it. <laughs> um, and we're at Chapman. You meet with the students once, so they can interview you as a client. And I think I'm done. Anything else? No, well, that's me. Actually, I'm finished. Thank you. Are you kidding? I should charge for this. Look at this. Holy cow. All right. Um, with, the, with the understanding that I cannot give you specific answer to your question and do you a service. Because if you were my client, I'd talk to you for a while to find out that what your real concern is. And I don't want to give you information to mislead you or anyone else who's going to act on that information because it, it may be entirely wrong because I don't have all the information. But some of these are pretty discreet. For example, the first one, books on a shelf. Are those titles protected? Uh-huh. <laughs> just like this. Not... What about product placement? Uh, object, uh, object in passing or a marathon, legal or not. Well, but product placement means the owner of the product is delighted to be in your film. They're thrilled to have something to do with your film. Sometimes they even pay to be in your film. Often it'll be like uh, a local brewery will supply beer at lunch. Uh, I've had that happen. No, don't do that. Um, they'll supply stuff for the film. In an, you, know, you can borrow the car if you zoom in on the, the vanity plate or something. So product placement is an understanding you have with the product owner, the person who has the rights. So you can, whatever they agree, have a nice day. Do it on paper so you know, to make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to do. But product placement is a, a different kind of license because they're excited to be it and may in fact pay you. But the consideration may be free car, free beer, free bus passes, I don't know, whatever it might be. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's a different, it's a different issue. Okay. Is an LLC or C Corp better for actors? Is an LLC or C Corp better for productions? Can I file for a C Corp myself and submit it in the downtown office? I'm not sure what the downtown office is, so I'm going to say no to that. Um, you can do it online. You can mail it to Sacramento. A corporation, this is more formal. One person can own a corporation. One person can own an LLC. If you are one person with a limited budget, you probably want to go with LLC because you're not going to remember to do the annual formal meetings with the notices and the meetings and the stamps and, the, and you know yes, all that goes with it. As a, as a corporation must. And if you don't keep up the formalities of the corporation, something called piercing the corporate veil can happen, which means somebody who sues you says it was a sham corporation. It didn't act like a corporation. It's a fake. It was only set up for one purpose, so I don't sue. And it, it just goes away then. It's, not, it's, it's a more trouble. There are many reasons to have a corporation. But for one person, an LLC makes more sense. And look at the Secretary of State's website. It'll tell you about filing articles to set up an LLC. Um, you, can, you can research it. You can do it a variety of ways. You don't need to hire a lawyer. You can. Um, but online, there's a lot of information on LLCs. Right. You need to pay the annual fee. If you don't pay it, the state will shut it down. I think I answered that. How do you sell a pilot? I don't know. Um, <laughs> work, work, work. <laughs> um, 
that's too long. Um, something in some, okay, this one mentions something in France. France, France. Uh, just whoever you are, sorry about this. France has a number of unique rules and laws. They have something called moral rights, droit moral. And I tried to do a French contract, and it was just torture. In France, the director is the owner of the film for creative purposes forever, literally, and their heirs, and the state if there aren't any heirs. You cannot change a film in France without the director's okay. It, it's, a, it's a completely different system in many ways, in moral rights. I don't know what, how that all works for books, but the contract I saw, it, the book got folded in. To, uh, well, I mean, you know, we do French remakes, but then it's a US film. You know, you don't see the big blockbuster French film, and even though they're wonderful, because there's so many issues with panning, scanning, cutting, and everything, it's hard to do French films. Um, legal steps for hiring a co-screenwriter on an existing idea or, or treatment. Um, go to the Writers Guild website, download the collaboration agreement, and make it completely one-sided in your favor. No, it's very fair. It'll say, you know, we, we must mutually agree on everything. Well, if you're hiring somebody, why do you have to mutually agree? Or if you're hiring them, simply hire them as a work made for hire in writing in advance. As a writer, you now have a work made for hire and you owe the work they've done. Oh, someone's asking me about an option. An option is, um, is something that this, this industry is sort of devised. I know there's other industries that do it, but it, it's a nice solution for you. Um, an option is, I love this thing. I'm going to do wonderful things with it. We're all going to get rich, and I know I can just make this work, but right now I'm broke. No problem. I believe in you, I love you, and I, I want you to do this, but frankly, I'm not giving it away. We have an option. Option has a term and an amount. My, here comes some good advice. Option will have a term, six months, usually longer, 12, 18. If it's short, you better know that you've got somebody standing right behind you to, to get this taken care of. If, usually it takes longer than every, anybody thinks it will, so let's say 12-month option. 12-month option says, I will pay you X amount, doesn't have to be much, and for that option period, you are taking this off the market. I'm paying you to pull this back if it's exclusive. I mean, that word is really expensive. Even if it's a dollar, get that word in. If it's not exclusive, you can all have options. Thank you very much. Oops. So if you have an exclusive option, you take it off the market. That thing is now going to sit here while the person who ha has purchased the option runs around and tries to see what they can get done with it, because nobody else can run around if it's exclusive. Generally, I like to have an extension period. So after 12 months, you might be this close. How horrible is that? And you can extend for an additional period for an additional payment. You use your judgment for what you think you need. If you're selling the rights that is being optioned, remember it's off the market if it's exclusive, so its value may not be increasing over that period of time. You're not selling it to anybody else. If you've got a best seller, it only stays there for a period of time. So an option takes it off. My legal advice to you, here's the only time you're going to hear me say this, is more business and practical maybe. In that option agreement, pre-negotiate the purchase price. When I exercise this option, I will do so by paying you this amount. That's now taken care of. Why? Because you're shopping it around town. Let's say you think this is going to be a million dollar picture. Somebody's going to give you a million dollars if that's when you go back to the writer and say, by the way, I'd like to purchase this. Wait a minute. I'm standing between you and a million dollars? What's that done to the price? Or I'll just wait 20 minutes and cut you out. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Or it may not be a million. It may be 10 million. It might be a bigger number. The writer's got a pre-negotiated purchase price. You don't have to go back and start over if you manage to get somebody to back the deal. Does that make sense? Does that answer the option? I don't know where you are. Um, chain of title. Um, uh, can I clarify about private homes and offices? If it's a private home, if you're talking to the owner of the home, they can give the rights to use the home. They can't give the rights for the bottles and the posters, but 
what's their you know, generic furniture, their rugs, their walls. They can give those rights. If you're talking to a renter, no, they're the renters. That's, that's, they don't own the place that you're using. Um, office, same thing. If, to film in an office, if the owner of that building knows you filmed in their building and they didn't get permission, you've made a mistake. It's the, it's the building, not the renter of the room. Some people feel, well, it's a generic office space. If you're confident nobody's going to know it's theirs, I'm not going to tell you it's OK. But if they don't know, if they do know, then you have to face it. Um, I'm not doing distribution. <laughs> um, what's the percentage of independent films that make it? Um, I'm going to actually take a stab at this one. First, I don't know. I don't know what that is, because everybody is an independent who is in a major. Uh, um, but in, in the clinic, I see people come through. The lower your budget, if you define making it as getting your budget back, a lot. You have many more avenues to do stuff now. If you make a picture, if you make a picture for just $50,000, recouping $50,000 is a lot easier than $50 million. Netflix might like it. Amazon might. I don't know. Look around. There's, there's various avenues for this. There are ways you can work with distribution now that didn't used to exist. So the, the more indie you are, the littler you are, the better chance you have. Also, many people do pictures at this level not because they think they're going to get rich on this picture. They're, they're promos. They're demos. And look what I can do. They go to festivals with them. So it's hard to measure then because they're going to festivals and say, look at what a great filmmaker I am. And sure enough, you are. Let's go do something else. I won these awards at these festivals. I've already answered that. Can, I, can you legal, legally use uh, brand names like McDonald's, Levi's, and feature them without being sued? I, I think you know. <laughs> um, I can't read that one. Um, Please address the bond payment that surprises producers at the 11th hour. You must know what I mean as I hear heated complaints about this from the filmmakers. Is that, is that the bond that SAG has you put up for your SAG members? I'm not sure whose other question was. Is that the bond? Yeah, SAG does that. You have to put in, you should be grateful. <laughs> if you're, for your SAG members, the SAG requires you to put a, their, their salaries into a bond, which can, can come out of your budget. So if you're going, use you SAG actors, SAG will say, we need to make sure they get paid. Here's your stick it in the bond. Yeah. Does that, does that answer the question, whoever it was? I'm not sure if that's the bond. I don't know of another bond. Um, um, uh, there's a, there's a, been a couple questions about financing and, and recoupment of investments and things. Um, it, it's kind of a separate lecture because there's so much involved. Um, and at your level, I'll give you just one little teeny piece of information, and that's that investors tend to, Aunt Susie or somebody may be happy to make their money back plus a little interest, in which case, kiss Aunt Susie, lover, God bless you, Aunt Susie. Slightly more sophisticated investors stay in with the profits, so they make their money back from first dollar plus their, and you're an investor, by the way. That, you're putting your own money in your pictures. Don't forget you, by the way. See, I'm here to look after you, I told you. You're investors too. You make your money back plus some interest before it goes into profit, as do all investors, however you organize it. And then some investors stay in with the profits after that, in which case often the investors are 50% are and producer production company are 50% from which deferred and, and points come. I know. That's it. <laughs> okay. Um, Documentary question, I'm sorry. For, um, they're taking pictures from Google Images, and how do you find the rights? Try Getty Images. Some of you waste your hands. Try Getty Images for, for photo rights. They've got a lot of, and they're getting much more sophisticated about giving out images. Um, if a writer who signed an invoice for rewrites without the words work made for hire Give him rights to my screenplay, possibly. Yeah, especially since now there's a piece of paper saying they, you know, they did it. There's an invoice saying you somebody wrote part of the screenplay, and you didn't have them assign those rights or get them at the outgo, maybe. 
again, I'm assuming you're going to get incredibly rich, in which case you're going to hear from some of these people. Um, outdoor shots of uh, landmarks, not principal focus. Depends. <laughs> Depends on landmark. Some buildings know. Disney Concert Hall, maybe if they enforce it, maybe. Some are very vigilant. The San Francisco Bay Bridge has a website, for, or at least it did, for paying so that you can use them. The Cabazon Dinosaurs, they have a website. Money. Um, if a script is written in California but will be shot in another country, does California law still apply? Depends on who wrote it. Is it, a, is it is, if the writer is sitting here, then it doesn't matter because you don't have a contract to enforce. If you have a contract, it should say what law applied. So I'm not quite sure where to go with it. Um, I think I did it, except for the ones I couldn't read.